My name is Maniac, the guy that won't kick you out of the lobby just because you're a low level, and today we're going to be taking on a uh, Ukrainian job. So let's get started. Now I'm going to show you really quick exactly what you're going to need. This mission doesn't require much, so let's, uh, let's get right into it. Now, you're going to do a lot of drill sitting on this mission, so you're going to want Hardware Expert Aced, Drill Sergeant, lol, and Kickstarter all aced. When Kickstarter is aced, it gives you a 50% chance of melee attacking the drill, and when you do melee attack the drill, it auto fixes it, which saves you on time, that way you don't have to sit there and keep uh, fixing the drill repeatedly, which you will do a lot. Let's see, uh, what other necessities do we need? Um, it's always good to have more stamina. We're going to need... Mm, we're going to be picking up a lot of loose items. If you ace this skill, you'll get 30% more when you pick up items, which is always a good thing. Um, we won't need any body bags, but I like the basic that for all of my basic stealth heists. Um, no lock picking. We will need ECMs. We don't need it, this particular skill aced, but I aced it anyway. Um, acing this skill, six cents, excuse me, is kind of important, as I kill a lot of civilians when I do stealth. It's much quicker and much simpler than just tying them up. So, acing this skill reduces the cost by 75%. When you're doing a mission that gives millions of dollars, killing a civvy for just a couple thousand isn't really much. But the main skill you're going to want in this skill tree, and for every heist, you will hear me say this in every stealth video, ECM Specialist. For the love of God, ace this skill, please. I cannot tell you how many times I've done stealth and somebody brought regular ECMs without this skill, and the heist just goes to crap. Real quick. The reason you want this aced is because if you play on a map and you answer four pagers, and you kill a fifth guard, you can only answer four pagers in any, any stealth heist. If you kill the fifth guard and you answer the pager, it's going to go loud. If you kill a guard and don't answer the pager, it's going to go loud regardless. So if you have this skill, and you kill another guard after you already answer four pagers, it will delay that pager for as long as this ECM is up. And each ECM, and this skill gives you two if you basic it, will block the pager by 30 seconds. It'll also block cameras and phones. Now, 30 seconds per ECM. So you can place down one, once it's up, place down another, before the first one goes out, mind you, and there you go. You just chain that pager along for a straight minute. If you have four people playing, that's four minutes worth of ECMs, which gives you plenty of time to run objectives or just complete the entire heist in general. Um, what else do we need? Let's see, uh... Nothing, maybe, uh, transporter, basic, throwing bags 50% farther, but other than that, that's really about it that you might, ne like, completely, like, a complete necessity. If you want to tie more civilians instead of killing them, basic force friendship, it will give you way more cable ties, and you'll be able to tie the hostages much faster, but other than that, I mean, look, you have about 63 skill points to mess around with. I see a lot of people asking me, um, what is the best stealth uh, build? Like, the best, the best one. There is, honestly, there's no best stealth build. Um, it varies on the heist, and I will go through each build before each heist and show you what you will specifically need, like ECM specialist uh, drills, and for this heist, that's about it, as it's pretty basic. But what I like to do is I like to go up the brawler skill tree to get frenzy. It seems rather unorthodox, I'm aware of that, but I run a, um, and just basic frenzy. All this other stuff is just sort of extra, but as long as you have frenzy basic and zerker basic, that's all that really matters. The reason behind this is because, uh, when I play, I like to use two specific perk decks in, uh, okay, my game just locked up there, that was... Odd. <laughs> when it comes to stealth, you can either use Burglar, which is DLC, mind you. Burglar will make it so that you bag corpses faster, answer pagers faster, lockpick faster, and crouch faster. It comes in handy. 
I like using Yakuza as it gives you a uh, it gives you a 20% speed boost when you're running through the missions. Doing things like Shadow Raid and Election Day, that 20% actually comes in handy quite a bit. Um, both of these are DLC, however. If you're looking for a non-DLC uh, stealth deck, I recommend maybe Crew Chief. And the reason behind that is is that uh, it increases your stamina, and it also increases... Where is it? If I can find it... I believe... Uh, yeah, it also increases your health. So, you know, it comes in handy a little bit. It's not like Burglar or Yakuza where it helps your speed, but having extra stamina also comes in handy for when you're doing a lot of running and missions. For weapons, I particularly use akimbos. I just use these because they're fancy. Any akimbo weapon will do. Any silent weapon will do. I also use the Judge shotgun. I strongly recommend using the Judge. The Judge is a community item, so as long as you're in the group, you'll get it for free. It'll be under the shotguns right here. If you do this shotgun, I strongly recommend, in fact, it's pretty much mandatory, to put a silencer or a suppressor on it. I know this looks ridiculous. It works fantastic. For melee, I just use the palm kata. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. But I just use this. It doesn't really matter. Um, whatever keeps your concealment low. I see a lot of people using the weapon butt, which it's super fast to use. Um, dynamite. I use dynamite as a throwable in stealth. The reason behind this is that sometimes civvies get alerted and they run off the map. Throw dynamite at them if you can and it will explode near them. If you can't shoot them as they hide behind a building, dynamite usually works fantastic. Almost, I usually have to do it a lot when other people mess up or when I mess up. Um, I use the lightweight ballistic vest just because I like the skull. I think it looks nice. You don't need it. Wearing, a, wearing just the regular suit in this case is uh, gives you more concealment. I use this just because. Now, as you can see, at the bottom right it says detection risk. Your detection risk, uh, what factors into that is the weapons that you use, the armor that you're wearing, uh, and the melee weapon that you have. My detection risk for the palm kata is maxed, so it, you know you can't really be detected, I believe, when you use this. Yeah, it's at 30. So 30 is the max. Um, as well as these, the concealment on both of my weapons are fairly low. To raise your, or lower your <laughs> concealment, there are two skills you want to have. Inner pockets, if you have it basic, it'll definitely help. I'm going to ace it because I'm using a ballistic vest. If you're using a suit, you don't have to ace this at all. And we can be faster, we can put that on too, parkour. Um, if, you're fine, if you find your concealment isn't low enough, see I'm at 4 now, at the top left. It says my concealment is at 4. If you go into the silent killer uh, tree and ace optical illusions, it'll give you one concealment for each silent weapon that you have. So there we go. I'm down to 3. I find that most people neglect that skill, and they're wondering and they ask me, why is my concealment so low? It's usually because they're missing that, or the inner pockets, uh, basic, like I said. Which gives my concealment, yeah, now it's at 32, instead of 30, like before. Alright, so, once again, ECM Jammer, you don't really need anything else. Um, Yakuza, yeah, I got everything I need. Masks, you know, don't matter whatsoever. You know, for a safe house, that place sure does get raided a lot. So the Ukrainian job is going to be under Vlad as the contract name. It's going to be at the bottom. Hello, my friend. I have a small favor to ask of you. Simple. I just want to get marriage off on wrong foot. The basic premise for this heist is that you're basically stealing a tiara to postpone a wedding for a rival of Vlad. Seems a little, uh... Vlad really doesn't like this Dimitri guy. Convoluted. One of these old country feuds. Maybe he shagged his sister or something. Anyway, let's help the man settle the score. We go for the tiara. Back room, from what I understand. Don't get the heat on you too early, or your escape's gonna be rough. Check your assets. Let's go. So, here we have the main screen for the assets. The one you're gonna wanna buy, the one I usually buy, is... The code for the shutters. I recommend buying that as 
I'll show you what it does when we start the heist. You don't really need expert driver as that's for loud. Vantage point is unnecessary, so is the camera feed and the body bags. You don't really need any of that stuff. Now that we have everything, let's get into it. Okay, this is business as usual for Vlad. Go ahead and start it. As you can see, we start literally in the same alleyway. We start in the same alleyway as we did in Jewelry Store. The same alleyway. This is basically the same exact heist. It's just Jewelry Store 2.0. There's the same door. We don't want them the same side doors. There's three ways to go in. Now, I do not recommend walking through the front door on this mission. Unlike Jewelry Store, there are metal detectors right in the front of the building. If you walk through, stay back. God. It will a, a siren will blare and everything will just go loud. It's still salvageable if you get an ECM down and you rush it, but it just makes things unnecessary. So we can go into the side. And I'll explain more about what this is in a moment. So you can see everything is basically exactly the same as jewelry store. You still have guards wandering around the back, but there are a few differences this time around. God. So here we can see, there's a civvy in the window. If you kill a guard in this back alley, hey, for instance, God. this gentleman right here, if I were to kill him right in the open, this civvy will see. And they're behind glass. So if you shoot that civvy, God, careful. there will be people on the inside that get alerted, specifically the cam guard. Watch so out. killing him God. here will alert her and alert people inside, and at that point it just becomes a, a domino effect unfortunate events careful guard so we're gonna go back to this box here this box is for the metal detector in the front it allows you safe passage so you can turn it off so you can keep going in and out of the front uh, part of the building there we go and that was easy so now we can walk in through the main door with no problem now obviously Stay I'm back. not going to do Go that on. because hey I like uh. going in through the sides so we're going to take this gentleman out, and see, that's why I like using the judge. Sorry, control, using the judge shotgun, me of a man if you run up onto a guard and shoot them point blank, they will kind of go flying, which allows you to position them away from windows, away from civilians so they won't be seen. And also, be careful not to kill the uh, guards in the back around the open windows, as there are cameras, civvies, and just a whole bunch of other nonsense. There's that lady again. See, you have to be careful. Shoot him away. Sorry, Control. I just came to think. Oh, that city to totally just saw what I did and did not Snap even care. Face. Just kidding. How the hell should I know, right? So just like every other stealth map, there are only four pagers on the map that you can answer at any given time. You've already gone through two. So lockpick the window here. I like going in through the side, this side in particular, to the right of the building. Bang. There will always be another guard in this room at any given time. He's watching the cams, so if you take this guard out, the cams are down in the whole building. He'll sometimes wander around the room a little bit. Oh, I believe that's the fourth guard. So let's just answer that. Now sometimes this map will spawn five guards. If that's the case, you might want to just restart. I guess I completed a daily, or said something that the game agreed with. So we're going to rush into this room. There's only one guy sitting here. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less. Now here we go. There will always be a safe here, every single time, and there will always be a safe here. You can essentially complete this entire mission without even leaving these back two rooms. That's it. That's all you have to do. Just wait for these two safes to be done, and that's the whole mission. But we're going to get all the extra loot and packages, so clearly that's not all. Now, no. Well, this is a good opportunity to talk about that. Occasionally, you'll have civvies who will walk in through the... Okay. <laughs> who will walk in through the back here. Maybe one or two. It's no big deal. Shoot them, take them out. It's easy as that. Now, there will always be a little extra necklace here. There you go. So let's start getting the packages while... Oh, wait. 
There we go. Two civvies. So now we have that Kickstarter uh, skill point, or skill set, excuse me. We can punch the drills, get them to work, if you're lucky. Now, from here, we're going to ECM rush. This is a good example of that. We're going to drop an ECM, doesn't matter where, floor, wall. Go in, take out all the civvies. In this map, though, it's better to rush to the front, and there you go. You'll activate the windows, which will shut the... Uh, which will shut the shutters. That way, people can't see inside like they could on Jewelry Store, making the mission even easier. Except for when your punches don't work, then you have to restart the drill. And see? The ECM only lasted about 30 seconds, which was plenty of time to rush in there and take care of all the civvies. Now, Bane will sometimes say that Tiara can be anywhere, it doesn't have to be in the safes. I've done this, yeah, I've done this mission. I don't even know. I, I, I've lost count. This is my warm-up mission when I first get on the game. I start with this mission, Are you looking for the tiara? and I've never, ever, ever found it anywhere else except the saves. Usually this one, usually. It could be in the other one, but it's usually in this save. I've never once found it in the front. It won't ever be in the front. So let's start finding some of the packages now that we're locked down. Fuck yeah. Under the desk. Got Off to the side by the bags. There will be one here. Fuck Sometimes there'll be... Maybe it's there. Sometimes there will be one here. And there can even be two under this desk. Got one it. here and one there. It varies sometimes. We're gonna run. We'll start with the right side and work our way back. Sometimes here, here, uh, let's see, there's maybe one here where this guard is laying, but I don't think so. There's one here. Oh, almost forgot about that city. Well, since everybody's dead, you can break the glass and nobody will hear it. To the left of the dumpster. Oh, I guess somebody on the outside looked in and saw, so let's just run and take care of that. Um, okay. I don't know how that civvy didn't see me. So let's see. Oh, this one didn't have the TR on it, so let's check the other one. And there we go. Now, essentially, the heist is done. We can leave at any time. But we're going to get the extra stuff because I'm thorough. Now, sometimes they'll be here. Now we're going to check the front. Underneath this bench. Fuck yeah. Underneath the mailbox. More civvies. In between these two cars Got in the it. parking lot across the street. There's one here up against this fence. Fuck yeah. And there isn't one in the parking booth or the truck, but there is one right here. Got it. And there you go. That's all the packages. Now when you're playing this mission. Be careful not to break the windows if you're on the inside, as if you do, if the cops spawn across the street, let me just drop an ECM so they can't call for help. If you drop an ECM across the street, these are, <laughs> if you break the windows, the cops across the street will see the broken windows from afar and call for backup, making the mission well loud if you don't take care of it. The cops spawn sometimes, sometimes they don't, it varies. That's RNG for you. Now that the metal detectors are, get, are down, we can go in and out freely as we please. So let's get all the extra loot. You have necklaces here. And that we have that skill point, or skill, uh, the skill point that we use to give us more XP, or money, I mean, for picking up necklaces and loose items. We get even more for collecting these, which is always a good thing. go. That's all the necklaces collected. So let's start working on the cases themselves. Now these are not alarmed. They won't ever be alarmed, so you don't have to worry about that. Just start blasting them, punching them, doesn't really matter. And just start collecting. Uh, let's see. 
I believe we are just about wrapping up. Now, as you can see, there's about two bags of jewelry. Each one's worth about 200 and 230,000, which isn't too bad. Sometimes there will be two, sometimes there will be more. I've seen about three, and I've also seen about one. So the amount of jewelry varies. Uh, okay. So, let me see if I have this map contained. If you throw an explosive anywhere on the map, like uh, dynamite, it will alert everybody on the map to your presence, no matter where Take they are, asshole. and if you can get to them. And there you go. The entire map is contained, everybody's dead, the only way I could possibly lose is if I downed myself intentionally, and I don't have the materials to do that. So we are essentially finished. Nice. Jules and Tierra. Time to collect from Vlad. He's gonna be happy. So as you can see, that mission took about 10 minutes and 30 seconds, but that's with slowing down, explaining everything. It won't take you nearly as long, I promise. This mission isn't that hard, and honestly, I don't see a lot of people needing help with it, but I do see a lot of common mistakes, such as the metal detectors alerting the uh, cops across the street, and that civilian in the window. Those things combined usually uh, are what make the mission go loud for lower level players. They're very easy to avoid if you're aware of them. Most players are not. So we made about 2.3 million in cash, to our offshore, mind you. Not bad. Oh boy, more money. Well, that wasn't too bad. We still have 28 unspent skill points, which I'm sure we'll need in the future. So... Yeah, I'd like to take this time to thank everybody I've played with in the past uh, week or so. You guys have been fantastic. It's been a blast playing with you guys, and to everybody that commented on the last video, I really appreciate that. You know. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I hope you all have a great night. Thank you.